Hey guys, what's up? A warm wishes for Christmas and I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, today in this video, I'm gonna talk about percolation. Uh, now what is percolation? It's basically the way a liquid would seep through uh, down a substance to the very bottom. And um, that's when you can say that a system percolates. That means the liquid flows from top to bottom. So that is percolation. Uh, but uh, this particularly is aimed towards a programming assignment that is by Princeton. It's called Algorithms Part 1. Uh, it's available for free in Coursera. So if you want, you can go ahead and enroll there as well. I'm gonna uh, like give a description, uh, give the links of all the, the question, the assignment question, the uh, course as well as my GitHub solution, my solution that's on GitHub in the description box below. So uh, go ahead and take a look at that if you want. And uh, yeah, so today's video is going to basically be a solution to the programming assignment uh, part one. So let's just begin. Cool. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, go over to this link, which is lift.cs.princeton.edu. Uh, and uh, I'll paste it down in the description box as well. So this uh, link would basically give you an overview and a setup tutorial about uh, how you can install the uh, IntelliJ IDE along with the lift java installer so it would basically mean you would have all, all the prerequisites uh, that princeton wants you to have uh, so i'm not going to walk you through the setup of ide instead i'm going to use uh, go directly to the percolation uh, boilerplate so uh, if you scroll down below you would find the percolation.zip which has the the basic uh, boilerplate uh, template that you would need that means the input and the uh, other uh, output of the input that they have provided along with uh, two visualizers uh, so if i click on it i should be uh, given provided with a download button i can go ahead and download the same uh, but i won't since i already have it so basically how it would look like is uh, you would have the folder inside of which should have a dot idea and dot lift uh, this one is for the IntelliJ, uh, both of them are for IntelliJ, but this is for the extra packages that are required. Uh, the dot .lift is for extra packages that are required by Princeton, like uh, ALGS4 and uh, uh, the other draw packages that they use STD in, STD out, etc. So uh, these are basically input and output. So the PNG files are basically the output and the text files are basically input. So if I do an equal 25, if I open this one, you would find that these are the input uh 25 is uh, the n position so n cross n matrix would be 25 cross 25 and these are the inputs so this would give a certain output which is also present in this uh, example folder so this is the output of equal 25 so this should be generated when you provide that uh, uh, input so let's go ahead and open this in IntelliJ. So mine one is inside of YouTube. So this is the one which I'm looking for. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on OK and this would uh, open it up. Uh, you would be uh, treated with this percolation assignment by default. So you can just go ahead and close the logo. And uh, you would find two important uh, Java files here. One is the interactive percolation visualizer and the other is uh, the simple percolation visualizer. So this percolation, uh, this particular, uh, both of them are actually dependent on uh, two or rather one uh, Java program that you're gonna write which is simply percolation.java and they are taking the class and borrowing that class basically and uh, this visualizer is built on top of that so they both will throw an error until you uh, write the percolation.java first so this is an interactive one where you can uh, basically interact with the, the lattice the matrix that uh, is that you have to provide based, based on the nth uh, whatever value you give on n and uh, this one is uh, the different one where you can use any of the inputs that are here uh, not in png but in text rather you can use any of those inputs and you can provide it to the normal visualizer and that would plot the uh, matrix and whether the system would percolate or not so uh, let's just begin with the simple percolation i'm going to use lift and create a normal simple percolation.java and 
so you have a basic percolation java which is not doing anything uh, but before i start coding i would like to go ahead and explain the uh, problem statement so this is the uh, question that princeton has provided us it's divided into two parts one would be uh, problem one and uh, the monte carlo simulation would be part two so the problem one generally what they say is they explain you what is percolation so let's take an example of these two uh, matrices or uh, lattice and we'll uh, discuss what is percolation so whenever water or any liquid substance would uh, seep through or find a way from top to the bottom through this empty or open sites uh, then that we can say that the system percolates so how you can decide that whether a uh, particular uh, box is uh, empty or not is by seeing the color variation so black is basically blocked white is uh, open so if you have white sites but it is not connected to the top that means water can't pass through it because you have a black border around it but since this one you can see a free flowing uh, uh, path directly from the top to the bottom you can say that this uh, system percolates however this doesn't because you have a black border surrounding it so the site isn't open but the open sites are below the border so that's why the liquid substance can't uh, pass through this so that's why this system does not percolate so that's basically what you are provided to do you uh, would be given certain inputs uh, where you would be uh, given the size of the matrix and you have to decide you have to open the uh, sites based on the inputs provided and you have to decide whether the system percolates or not so the api that they want you to use is this they would uh, want you to have a constructor percolation and they uh, want these certain APIs so you would have an open that opens the site a boolean is open that checks if a site is open or not is full checks whether the top and the bottom or the row or the column is full or not yeah, provided the row and column is it full or not uh, the number of open sites basically gives you the uh, total number of open sites that are there uh, that you have currently open or whenever it's called it checks that particular instance of whether how many sites are open at that particular instance uh, percolates if uh, it's a boolean whether the system percolates true or false and then you have a void main where you can give testing options and uh, other stuff and this is the part two of the program uh, where you are basically uh, provided multiple uh, inputs for percolation so you would uh, do tons of uh, percolations and create an average you are given the formula that uh, if you to find the 95 percent uh, confidence interval for the percolation threshold uh, you are given the constants and you would basically be basically uh, provide a minus and a plus like a variation about uh, the average to find the 95 percent confidence interval and uh, this would basically differ every time for the same number because it's uh, it's a probability and, uh, this is the Monte Carlo simulation, the part two, and you are supposed to use these APIs. So I'm going to give a uh, give this link in the description box below as well. So if you want to go ahead and explore more uh, about the problem statement, feel free to do so. Now let's talk about the solution and how we are going to implement it. So I'm going to go ahead with this draw board and explain you with a very basic example. So what we have here is the is, is a matrix uh, which is uh, size 3 cross 3. So n in this case our n is uh, 3. So this is uh, one particular example where we are taking the n uh, equal to 3. So initially all the sites would be blocked as provided in the question as well. You can see this here. So in the Monte Carlo simulation to estimate the threshold initially all sites uh, to be blocked. So what I'm going to assume here or like given the question as well but let's say everything is blocked so everything would be black and now if I open this up uh, the water seeps down so this becomes uh, let's say fill so F now if I open this up then nothing should happen because it's not connected the entire thing is blocked and only this part is open so this is an open site uh, I can open this up as well so this would be an open site uh, and then let's say I open this one this is also an open site but still water won't be able to flow or the liquid won't be able to flow since uh, this are blocked these are all blocked now let's say if I open this one up then what happens is water gets an entry point from here and then this becomes full this would become full and this would become full and we have a system that percolates so the water would uh, come in through this way enter this way and exit from this way so that's how we can say all the f parts they are all uh, sites in the entire matrix that are full 
um, this is still open this is not uh, filled with any liquid substance but we can see that the system percolates so so considering the algorithm this might be costly since uh, we have to uh, take each and every uh, element in the top row and uh, we have to check considering like if they this is empty open or full or if this is open or full or if this is open and open or full so if if it was say 20 uh, n is n was 25 or n was 100 then it would cost a lot of uh, extra time uh, and complexity which we do not want so that's why this approach is not really a good one so we could have easily done a zero to one one at and second uh, index and then we could have easily checked for each one uh, at the zeroth index and each one at the last uh, row so the zero row and the last row we would need to check each and every element uh, with a simpler approach in order to see if the system percolates or not uh, but then that's too costly so uh, we can't accept this uh, algorithm so what we can do is let me go back entirely to the point where we had nothing and uh, so we had this so we had n equal to 3 so what i'm going to do instead is i want to make uh, a, a point separately which would just be a starting point let's say this and have an ending point so that that that's how i want to restrict uh, the check only to one singular uh, element so let's say water the wa the flowing of everything starts from this part and uh, this is uh, giving water to this this as well as this and whatever is coming out from the bottom is coming out to this this uh, coming out from these three to this uh, singular point so even if it was 100 all the 100 node at the very bottom row would uh, just uh, point to one single uh, extra element so we are going to call this as bottom let's call, just say b okay so let's just run it properly so this is b and let's just say this is top so it's t so that uh, reduces the complexity to quite a bit since uh, we only have to check for one singular position uh, which is the t and uh, if it is connected from t to b then we can say that the system percolates so this instead of a zero this would be one first index second index third index and uh, this is uh, the fourth index now which is the bottom and uh, the top is zeroth index so that's uh, what we're aiming for in this algorithm and uh, for the middle uh, elements let's say uh, we open this particular side so this is full uh, so for the edges it's different but for the middle element we have to check for all the neighboring uh, elements as well so if uh, if let's say i open this side we have to check if this is this is uh, full or not if this is full or not if this is full or not and this is full or not so that's uh, what we're going to do in the first uh, program so let's begin So uh, the variables which we need for this program would be this. So we would have a, a top which is 0 and we would have a 2D uh, array of open since this is a matrix and we would want everything to be uh, false initially which means it's not open, uh, true is it's open and we would have a final int size since we are not going to change the size it's always going to be fixed to n. Uh, then we are, ha are going to have a bottom we are going to have int open sites which would which would be the total number of open sites which will keep on incrementing and also the weighted quick union um, qf uh, object of the whatever princeton provides us so the first thing we're going to do is create the constructor so what we are going to do with the construction constructor creation is we're going to create an a, n by n grid so the dimension of the matrix would be size into size and so the size is uh, basically n so we have size equal to n the bottom would be size into size plus one since uh, according to the diagram if this is n this would be one two three four five six seven eight nine and this is ten so that's why size into size should be nine plus one this should be ten if it was any other n then that would also have been scaled appropriately that's why we're gonna keep the uh, bottom as size into size plus one the qf is uh, we are initializing the object qf to plus two size into size plus two since if this is plus one the above will also be plus one so so the entire thing would be size into size n cross n matrix plus one plus one so that's why the entire thing is size into size plus two now the number of open sites uh, would be a new boolean size into size so so we are initializing the open array with uh, 
the size of size that was the n basically of the 2d matrix and we are all uh, we are going to uh, make it false initially so the open sides uh, when you, you start of the program is zero so there's no open side at all now the next thing we are going to do is uh, uh, apply the logic of um, open which is this uh, api that uh, princeton is looking for which is this one open this opens the side uh, row and column if there is no if this is not already open so you're going to provide a row and a column and you're going to open the side if it is not already open so let's go ahead and do that okay so what i'm doing here is opening the box row of i and column of j if it's not already open if a uh, box is open if we say the value is true that means the box is open if it's false that means the box is closed so um, what we have here is public void open which is taking the row and uh, a column it's uh, there's something called check exception which we are going to look at in a few minutes so what we have here is open uh, row minus one and call minus one so since we have an incremented value like we um, purposely made it one instead of zero so this is according to our algorithmic logic but initially the matrix would always start at zero zero right so that's why we have to do it should be zero comma zero that's why we always have to do a minus one in order for the program to understand which uh, particular index we are trying to uh, mod modify so open row minus one and call minus one is true so we are uh, turning the blocked side into a, an open one so we are opening the box and we are also incrementing the open no, uh, number of open sites so it should be a one instead of zero now since we have done a pre-increment now uh, we are checking the edge cases so let's say if row is one so row is one means if we are talking about this particular uh, row here so if row is one then we have to uh, do a Q qf.union so get quick find index row call and the top so get quick find index is another api that we are going to use so let's just go ahead and write the api first so what this API does is it basically uh, retrieves the uh, index uh, of the box from the matrix. So whichever row and call we pass into the into this um, API, it will return you the uh, index of that particular um, intersection of rows and calls. So for this one, let's say I pass on uh, one and one, since uh, this would be one one not zero zero according to our algorithmic logic so if we pass on one and one it would basically take one and one here and then just do size which is uh, three into row minus one which should be one minus one so it should be zero plus call so call is one in this case so it will return one so in this case as well in according to drawing this is one this is two this is three this is four so like that this is nine and this is ten so it is returning the number that we uh, assumed so let's say so if this was 4 cross 4 this would be 16 so it's returning that particular uh, element number in this uh, api so we have this quick find uh, get quick find index uh, api now so what it is doing is it's taking the union of uh, that particular uh, uh, row call or that particular uh, element that we are giving and doing a union with the top so what we are doing is this is the top so we are doing a union with uh, so the, if this is one then we are doing a union if we are passing that particular row and column which is one one then we are doing a union between this and the top element so that's what we're doing uh, in this one just in case the index provided the row called provided is uh, from the first row then we would do this similarly for the last row if the row is equal to the size then we are going to do uh, the same uh, but we are going to do it with the bottom not the top so for any other um, boxes or any other uh, elements which are in the middle we are going to apply this uh, algorithm so this particularly says that if row is greater than one and uh, if row is less than size so if for any other rows in between uh, excluding one and the last uh, row so for this one it would be two not three and one it would be just two so if we had a bigger matrix it would be all the rows uh, in between so for all the rows uh, uh, in the middle leaving the top and bottom what it is doing is it's checking if it's is open the row minus one and the call so if the previous and the next or so the top and bottom of that particular uh, meet of the particular element of the particular box 
if it's open then it's doing a union so let's just implement this is open uh, API first to get better clarity so what is open is doing is uh, it's checking uh, again let's just ignore the check exception for the time being so it's checking if uh, uh, the opened row of minus i and call minus i if it is open or not so since we whichever uh, row and call we are passing in this open uh, function we are already making turning it to true which is we are already opening it instead of false so that's why whatever this returns would know if it is open or not so it's basically checking that if is open if uh, row is greater than one and it is less than one and row minus one and plus one so if this is open or not so let's say in this in this case we're targeting the middle row here so if we want to open uh, this one this particular fifth uh, element so we are checking if row minus one which is one if this is open and if this is open so if this if the top one is open so let's say row minus one if this one is open then you do a union uh, with this so that's what this condition is for if row is uh, greater than one and is open row minus one and call then you do a union and you get the exact index of this of the current row call and the minus one row call and then you do a union and this one is checking the opposite so if it's row plus one then you do a quick like get the index of row call and also the index of plus one row call and do a union so this second one is checking if uh, this is open or not and if it's open then you do this uh, the, do the union similarly this other two is uh, checking the same thing but for columns if column is uh, greater than one and it's uh, less than the size and if the call minus one and uh, call plus one is open then you'd go ahead and do the union of that as well now that's basically the how we are handling the middle rows now let's check the other apis that uh Princeton wants us to implement so we have the main constructor we have uh, void open we have done the is open and uh, now we are left with these so we have to check if uh, the site is full or not we have to check how which is the uh, number of open sites which we are already doing with uh, the variable open sites so we can just return that one here and also we need to see if uh, the system percolates or not so let's go ahead and implement those so let's uh, start with the very basic one which is uh, the number of open sites which we can say that uh, it returns the total number of open sites so we can just return this variable which are already counting at the top uh, right here and uh, the other one is if it's full or not so this is how we are going to implement the is full method so it's a boolean method which takes a row and column and it checks if the row is uh, greater than zero and it's less than size basically the uh, inbound range so if it's within the range we have to check if the top is connected to whatever row and column is uh, supplied so this is also a new way of writing uh, connected so i tried the connected method as well but uh, princeton said that it's deprecated they have deprecated that particular api so i'm going to use this is like a, a new way of writing the same thing so this is like a new way of writing it previously what you would have done is uh, let's say you would have done connected so if top is connected with this uh, get quick union this get quick find index of row and column whichever uh, number index number is uh, denoted by these two variables parameters and the top so if top is connected to this particular index then you can say that it is full so but uh, they have uh, deprecated this the same thing and they have said that a new way of writing it is uh, this rather than that so i'm going to use that one here now the very uh, basic one is if the system percolates or not and it's also pretty easy so what you want to do here is just say that um, if the top is connected to the bottom then you can basically say that the system percolates and that's it now that's mostly everything that's leaves that leaves us with just one more uh, function that is remaining which is this check exception and that is just a boundary condition checking method it checks if uh, there are any illegal argument exception so i'm gonna place it right before the open method so this should be the check exception so public void private void check exception uh, it checks if the row is not less than zero and it does not exceed it 
uh, and it also the column the same rule apply for the column if if anything like that happens then you need to throw an illegal argument exception that's it so that's basically how you would uh, tackle the percolation problem obviously this is uh, one particular solution this is my uh, solution my fix for this uh, particular problem statement uh, there are other solutions and other ideas out there as well but uh, this is this might not be a 100% accurate but this is one way of doing it so let's go ahead and uh, test it I'm gonna save it and we are gonna use this percolation visualizer test uh, whatever we have built so the re uh, what the first thing is obviously compiling it so I'm gonna recompile this and let's see if we have any errors or not parsing it finished and uh, looks like it successfully compiled yeah build completed successfully now we are going to use this uh, percolation visualizer visualizer in order to uh, see what we've built so uh, what we are going to pass in this one is the inputs that Princeton has provided us so let's say input three four five six whatever we want to pass let's say six we want to pass this they also have a respective uh, output for the same so this is input 6.png and they say that this our output should look exactly like this because the inputs they have provided is exactly the same so if if it doesn't that means you are doing something wrong in your program so you might need to go ahead and check it so let's just uh, recompile uh, this visualizer first and uh, we are going to pass in the argument so run this with arguments so in this argument field what we would want to do is uh, give the input 6 uh, txt as the input and the output should look as the exact uh, png uh, image that princeton has provided if not that means you are doing something wrong you might need to go back and uh, take a look at it let's just hit ok and this should uh, populate the exact uh, matrix that princeton wanted us to Okay, so this is working. I can uh, run it again with a different input if I want to. So let's say if I do input 10, then uh, it would generate a new different matrix and it will check if it percolates or not. So yeah, it does percolate and we have 56 open sites. So if I go ahead and take a look at input 10.png, then this is uh, what the output is. And I had a slight uh, issue with this corner that means my algorithm is not at 100% accurate but still uh, 56 sites are open and it does percolate so that means your algorithm is working but it might have some edge case uh, checks missing okay now i have also gone ahead and created the percolation uh, stats.java uh, code already so these two uh, things are already up in github now i'm gonna go with a quick walkthrough since it's not that difficult since it's since we now have the base percolation class up and running which this should be uh, pretty easy now this is the monte carlo simulation now what they want us to do is uh, they want to repeat this computational experiment t times and average the result so we are going so we will be provided with a t uh, variable which is the number of times we're going to repeat this and uh, also the n which is the matrix size so uh, we would have to create uh, a mathematics mathematics similar to this one uh, with the help of the program and repeat it three times uh, and then we'll take the average and that would give us this uh, result so we are going to use these apis so one would be the main percolation stats which is taking n and uh, t so this is this is the number of times that we are going to um, use this again and again then we are going to have a public double mean which would be the sample mean of the threshold also the standard deviation of the threshold and uh, the confidence low and confidence high so the 95 percent confidence low and high this would be this one this is the confidence low this is confidence high okay so that's that now let's just look at the code uh, it's pretty simple code what i have done is i've abstracted this uh, confidence uh, constant value 1.96 which is in the in the formula so that we don't have it uh, repeated everywhere we don't have to write this uh, this since this would take up extra memory so we are gonna use it uh, once abstracted out at the very top so this is let's let, let this be a static final uh, value and then we have experiment counts and also the fraction so it's a array uh, since we are going to take the average of all the different uh, values uh, fractional values now we are going to perform t independent computational experiments on this uh, grid 
so we are uh, this is the percolation stance api which is taking n and t so we are also going to ensure that this is uh, b in the range and not uh, getting out of range now the experiment counts is equal to t since this is the number of trials that we are being passed on the fraction is uh, we are making it a new double of uh, the number initializing it basically with the number of experiment counts that we have since we are going to take the average obviously and uh, we are basically uh, running a for loop so what this for loop is doing it's, it's running for the amount of number of the experiment counts that we have and basically uh, it's creating a new uh, it's creating a percolation object which is the percolation class we already created it's creating in the percolation object which is taking an argument of uh, n the matrix size now what we're doing in this part in the while loop is basically uh, we're saying that while the system does not percolate so while it does not percolate you need to uh, do these things so what these are is we are generating random i and j uh, values so uh, from this diagram uh, uh, what we had previously so we are generating this random indices i and j now why we are doing that is because uh, we want to see when the system percolates and uh, we want it to be random uh, so that the fraction whichever we get is uh, sort of a probability so it will be different every time so uh, we are generating random i's and j's and checking if uh, the particular uh, box if it's open or not and if the system percolates or not so if it's not open then we are opening it if the i at i and j uh, values uh, we are passing it to the to the matrix and if it's not open then we are opening it and we are adding it to the number of open sites now once we get once the system percolates we get the total number of open sites and then we are uh, computing the fraction so the fraction is uh, we're type casting it to a double since it was uh, not double previously open site was a um, integer value so we are type casting it into a double and we are doing uh, we are dividing it with uh, n cross a n into n now why we're doing it because in the question we are properly given that if sites open in a 20 by 20 lattice according to the snapshot below is uh, 204 then we would divide it by the total number uh, the entire like basically the size the entire matrix to get the result now uh, that's what we are doing and this is just for one singular uh, matrix so we are adding the ex experiment number which is the zeroth experiment so for the first experiment uh, we are adding the fraction uh, into the uh, array index so we are going to do this for uh, this many times how, how, how many experiment counts we have and we are going to store that in the fraction in the fraction array so that we can compute the average now the sample mean would be we'd be using this std uh, uh, api the library that uh, is provided uh, and we would calculate the mean by passing on the array and this uh, library would uh, give us the mean of the entire uh, whatever we have computed we also would uh, compute the sample uh, standard deviation using the same uh, library so we are going to pass stdev uh, and the same array also we would compute the lower bound of the 95% confidence interval which is uh, this uh, formula x bar minus of uh, 1.96 s divided by uh, mean square root of t so uh, this is the same thing which we have written so mean which is the uh, x bar minus uh, the confidence 95 which we have declared above uh, uh, 1.96 initialized above 1.96 and uh, into the standard deviation which is s so we have this established 1.96 into s divided by the mean uh, square root of uh, experiment count so this is basically a simple formula which is uh, uh, computing the confidence low and uh, the same thing goes for confidence high which is uh, doing a addition instead of a subtraction and that's it that's uh, all we have uh, we are taking the uh, arguments uh, arcs 0 and arcs 1 we are taking n and t and uh, we're passing this on to our constructor uh, so we're passing n and t and that's uh, we, we are getting the result out of it and we are just displaying the result and that's that's all we're doing right now so this should uh, basically give us an output similar to the one that they have uh, they want so if we pass on let's say 200 and 100 we should be getting something like this but exactly not the same exactly because since this this uh, is bound to differ since we are not sure when the system percolates and when it doesn't so let's just go ahead and run this uh, recompile this and run this with the variables uh, values 200 and 100 and the output that they have caught is uh, point 
0.591274 for confidence low and uh, 4712 for confidence high now let's see what we get so the up uh, the in the argument we are passing the same input 200 and 100 and let's see what we get so we have got 59301 and 626 which is different so it's 59591 and 594 but we have got something else now if i run it again i should be getting a new result a different one so it's now 590 and 594 so that's the thing so we are not sure when the system percolates and whenever it percolates we are getting a, a mean of all the fractions that we have and we are getting uh, uh, the new confidence low and confidence high values every time so that's it that's that for uh, how you can solve the the percolation problem i have the solution uh, the code of the solution in my github account as well uh, i'll be pasting the uh, link to this uh, solution as well in the description box below and the question is also attached as a pdf so if you go to source you will find both the code that they want it's percolation or java and percolation stats or java and of course i did a lot of mistakes when i was uh, trying to do, do this and uh, here is my submission list so the final submission result was 91 which is this code which i have uh, up on github the other uh, ones that i uh, tried uh, i had both sort of mixed results both failed and passed uh, similarly uh, for few reasons few issues and uh, they have a great uh, output grading system which gives you the exact uh, issue that was uh, that is there with your code and it helps you learn a lot now one particular thing that uh, i uh, realized when i was looking into this uh, graded output results which was giving me lower scores was they want you to document everything which is a great thing so if you don't do this one so like you don't give a space they have a uh, style check uh, checker implemented in the grading system so this would get you more marks than doing this um, and uh, let's talk about the main percolation or java program so if you do like don't give a space in between i think you should have a uh, marks increase in that other than this uh, they always want you to do a uh, illegal uh, argument exception so they want you to do an argument check uh, like a exception handling every time uh, you have these values which is a good thing definitely and also they want you to uh, name this uh, static variables properly so top you can't write top in small in smaller in lowercase basically so they want you to write it in uppercase and uh, also if uh, they, if you have a static variable and you are uh, writing it somewhere down the line below like, so let's say you are writing it here so they would give you a lower score for this uh, they want you to write it at the very top before uh, declaring any other things so keeping those things in mind uh, i have structured this code accordingly and this is giving me uh, a 91 score out of 100 uh, but of course there are a few mistakes here and there and, and a few tests fail uh, which is why i don't have uh, full marks but then yeah that's my uh, part of the solution and uh, you can go ahead and improve on this and feel free to play around with the algorithm so yeah that's that's that so thank you so much for watching this and uh, if you liked it hit the thumbs up button and uh, also hit the subscribe button down below and uh, i hope to do more such uh, videos as i progress towards the week two three four uh, so stay tuned and thanks again for watching it bye bye